time to check it out. Lights, camera, action. Oh yeah, we definitely have power. Don't know how about you, but personally, sometimes I just wonder, is it really not possible to send some power across the room without a wire? Mostly it happens when I need to install an electronic device, so where I just can't deliver power supply without chipping the walls or something. Well, I guess it's time to check it. So, am I going to talk about Tesla coils? Absolutely not. I'm looking for something that will be practical, not necessarily spectacular. And the only thing that comes to my mind is solar panel illuminated with an artificial light source. At least if I'm supposed to build it within reasonable time and budget. If you know other ways on how to send some power from here to there, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so should I just point flashlight into my panel and jump down? Well, I don't think so, but let's test it anyway. First I need a way to measure the output of solar panel. It's a cheap 0.4 watts, 5.5 volts unit, so I can expect approximately 70 milliamps on the output if I illuminate it with power density of 1000 watts per square meter. It would be enough to use two multimeters, one for volts, one for amps, and a potentiometer to adjust the load but I want to draw some characteristics and that requires a lot of measurements, so I'll just build a simple circuit that will simplify this process. Here is the idea. I will make custom PCB containing simulated load, controlled by poles with modulated signal, and two analog outputs, one for voltage and the other one for amperage. I will use Raspberry Pico as controller and Stargate to interact with it. Keeping the story short, after a bit of soldering, 3D printing and coding, I have my test device ready. Obviously it's not a laboratory equipment, but works good enough for its purpose. I also created a separate code to deal with generating the current voltage curve data in form of CSV file. Thanks to Stargate I can just plug this logic to my physical device without the need to implement it all on microcontroller side. Ok, gear is ready, let's find out how much power I can draw from panel if I illuminate it with such 11 watts LED bulb. So here is what I get. As you can see, results are far from spectacular. Maximally it was possible to produce around 100 milliwatts, what gives us an overall coupling efficiency of about 0.9%. Comparing to that, even steam engine is a masterpiece of efficiency. Maybe it will get better if I remove this diffusive cover. Well, it did help a little, but sure it's not any major breakthrough. So maybe a different light source. How about this old school incandescent light? Ok, that looks a lot better. At least we get somewhere close to nominal parameters of this solar cell. But how is that possible? LED bulb seems even a bit brighter than this one. The answer is within the spectrum of light produced by specific light source. For LED bulbs, regardless if it's cold or warm version, almost all the light is emitted within visible range. But this is not the case for incandescent lights. Due to its physical nature, light is produced in a very wide spectrum. So in case of incandescent lights, what you can see is just a tip of an iceberg. Way more light is emitted below visible range. To make things more complicated, it appears that solar panels doesn't like each wavelength evenly. If you google around for spectral response of photovoltaic devices, you'll probably find a chart similar to the one from this article. In short, it shows how much current can specific solar cell generate from a watt of light at specific wavelength. So how does this fit our light source's characteristics? Well, it should be something similar to this. You can clearly tell that spectrums of LED bulbs are pretty much away from optimal point. Also incandescent light doesn't seem to fit well. Even though it produces more of what we need, it still wastes way too much energy. Considering that I used 60 watts bulb for my test, 
The overall coupling efficiency turned out to be a ridiculous 0.6%. Conclusion is simple, you can hang a light bulb in front of solar panel and produce trace amounts of electricity, but if it's supposed to make any sense, you need to try harder. So let's try to be a bit more scientific this time. I'm gonna check several monochromatic LEDs of various wavelengths to check how they perform in combination with solar cell I have. It will be red, green, blue and infrared ranges. To make comparison easier, I'll adjust LED power to 3 watts for each test. For this purpose, I need to build another device, quite similar to the one I made for solar panel. This time I don't need any automation to adjust power, I can easily do it by hand, but still I can use Stargate as convenient user interface. All necessary equipment is finally ready, time to check who's the winner. There is just one more thing worth mention before I start the test. As mentioned already, solar cell efficiency depends on wavelength it is illuminated with, but it appears also LEDs are not evenly good at producing various wavelengths. If you check datasheets and recalculate lumens into radiometric power where necessary, it becomes clear that differences in LED efficiency are significant. I'm not an expert in this matter, so I won't get into details on why it is so, I'll just do the math and show you how it looks for LEDs I picked for test. Just by watching the chart I have a feeling that there will be one clear leader of this competition. But enough guessing, let's just check it out and speak about facts. By the way, it's really a convenient coincidence that my camera is not able to filter out all the infrared light from this LED. To my eyes it's totally invisible. Time to check the results. As expected, green LED performed the worst due to its poor efficiency. Red being significantly better, but its efficiency is still far from perfect, so the results are not impressive as well. The second award goes to blue LED. But even though it's much better than red in terms of efficiency, its wavelength is so much away from panel's optimum that it was barely able to outperform red LED. And the winner is... the infrared LED. Of course such result wasn't difficult to predict, but I'm still surprised on how much it beaten its competitors. It's been able to produce as much power as 11 watts light bulb consuming only 3 watts. Well, only is probably not the best word here, considering that we consumed these 3 watts to get 0.1. But on the other hand, it was always supposed to be sort of last resort technology, not to compete copper. So whatever, let's build the infrared flashlight and see what happens. So this is our winner. In this specific use case, it's really fortunate that the best suited LED for the job works outside of visible range. Another advantage of this specific model is that it emits light in a very narrow angle comparing to other LEDs. It will be pretty important if I would like to install some collimator lens later on, and I certainly will if it's supposed to work at distance of at least few meters. Downside is that its footprint is not very convenient for DIY applications. Also price is higher than standard LEDs of similar electric power. I will use four such LEDs in series to generate sufficient amount of light for my panel to work on its nominal parameters and a basic LED driver configured to push one amp through my LEDs. I still have some power LEDs from previous experiments, so I can solder them directly to my solar cell and see right away how this thing works. Their mutual forward voltage should be close to panel's optimum, so there is a good chance to utilize most of available power without additional parts. Ok, the scene is ready, time to check it out. Lights? Camera? Action! Oh yeah, we definitely have power. It looks a bit like a magic trick. Nice show, but how does it look in absolute numbers? First time I tested it, results were disappointing. 280 milliwatts, it's way below expectations. But I quickly realized that I underestimated the amount of heat generated by LEDs. Radiator was simply too small, so it's been getting pretty hot. 
As my radiator was already sticked to LEDs with thermal glue, the only fix left was to add a cooling fan and this improved performance by almost 20%. But still I had a feeling that it can do better. Then I thought that maybe I should use some sort of reflector, same as I did in previous tests. And that was a shot. With reflector and cooling on the meter side, solar panel been able to exceed its nominal power significantly. Of course reflector is sort of temporary solution, if I want to make my wireless coupling work on distances of at least few meters, I still need to collimate the light with lens. But that's completely different technical challenge, so I leave it for a separate video. For now, let's consider it a proof of concept. Ok, so what have we proven so far? Is it possible? As demonstrated, yes, absolutely. Is it affordable? For components I pay less than 30 euro. That's comparable to price of power bank, so I guess I can say yes, the price sounds reasonable. Does it make any sense? Well, that's the controversial point. What I didn't mention yet is that my infrared emitter takes around 14 watts. So if maximum power I can get on panel side is 0.5 watts, the overall efficiency of such system turns out to be not more than 3.5%. And there is not much space left for further progress. As already mentioned, LED efficiency is 43%, but it's solar cell to bottleneck here. It can convert less than 10% of light into an electric power, so maximum theoretical efficiency for this couple is just 4%. I already got pretty close. So is there a point in using something so inefficient? That's a very good question. Let's see some numbers. 14 watts consumer will use about 10 kilowatt hours per month. If we assume 20 cents per kilowatt hour, we get monthly cost of about 2 euro. Significant, but still acceptable. Especially if you compare it with monthly cost of alkaline batteries for half watt device working continuously. In case of R20 batteries, it would be more than 50 euro. But I guess nobody would use alkaline batteries for such application. Power bank is obviously a better choice. And for the price of such wireless power source, you can easily get 20,000 mAh unit which should be able to provide half watt for around 8 days. Unless your device is located in some hardly accessible area like behind a window or on a ceiling, charging the power bank once a week doesn't seem to be a big deal. So, as it turns out, the answer for question does it make sense should be no in most cases. You need to be in a very specific situation to consider using such extraordinary solution. And what is your opinion? Do you think it might be useful? Let me know in the comments if you see any real-life applications for such device. Don't forget to leave a like if you find such content interesting. Thanks for watching and see you on other videos!